OK, so the third and final approach that's available to us from within Nuke is called Line Analysis. Uh, we will start by just taking a look at how we set this up, um, and then we will apply it to a plate to perform a rig removal. So I'll just come over here, and I'll, I'll take this one out, this one I did before, and just uh, connect this up to the, to the original plate of the Tudor house. Uh, we don't need to use our roto node this time uh, because as we did with image analysis because we uh, we're not going to be using um, an algorithm to auto generate the uh, the undistort we're actually going to be manually defining the parameters by which the undistort operation takes place by drawing some lines and that's essentially what this uh, what this pr operation does i'll just um i'll just add another lens distortion node into this oops I shouldn't have done that I, I hate untidy lines on node on node trees so I'll just reconnect those so this is my new lens distortion I'll just flush out the uh, the node properties so that we can see this and this is the line distortion you can just see there everything zeroed out so this is the line distortion okay this is going to be a little bit tricky within the screen capture software but uh, Bear with me. Um, I'm just going to come somewhere into the middle of this uh, this area, somewhere around about here. Uh, I just know that somewhere in this area, we st there are a lot of vertical and horizontal lines that we can uh, that we can refer to. So essentially, the way that this particular operation works is it estimates the distortion from lines that we manually draw along features in the plate that we know to be straight. So especially useful if there is no grid available. So effectively this would be the second best of the three options. Uh, this would be the option that I would use if I didn't have a grid. And obviously therefore the image analysis is therefore the third option. So what do we need to do in here? First thing we need to do is we need to turn the drawing mode on. Um, and that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to pull this down and make more more space and I'm going to be using my middle mouse mi middle mouse button to be clicking around this in order to draw, draw some lines okay so the way that we the way that we draw onto this is that we left click in order to start a line and we have, uh, we can essentially track a line down a particular uh, down down the screen so if I click say there now we'll see a little marker appear and I can come down this and append this just to keep adding to it just by left clicking and when I get to the end where I want that to end I just right click and we can see that that draws a line okay so that's the principle behind this and the idea would here would be that we would go we would go through and we draw a, a bunch of uh, of horizontal and vertical lines so I'll just do a couple more and then I'll pause the screen capture so we'll come down this line well, maybe I didn't pick such a good option here and this is essentially how we go on we can we need to do horizontals as well wherever possible so I'll just do along that and again I'm right clicking I need a third one oh, that's that's hideous so I'm just going to uh, discard that one to do that I can just come here and I can say discard the last line or delete the last line so let's have another go at that Turn my drawing mode back on. It's a little bit better. Okay, just one more. So left click, left click, left click, left click, and right click to complete the line. OK, so I'm just going to do a few more. Uh, I'll pause the screen capture and then when, I, when I've done that I'll, be, I'll start it back up. 
So as you can see I've drawn a whole bunch of horizontal and vertical lines. There aren't that many horizontal lines to be honest but uh, I've pinched a couple. So essentially that's it. We would All we would do now is just hit the analyze line button. Wait a few seconds and that should have drawn we can see there that it's affected our, our radial and lens distortion and it's also changed some of the values in our card parameters. And if we come to our node and we just toggle it on and off we can see the effect of that undistort taking place. Okay. There's a couple of things I should have maybe pointed out as I was drawing these lines. First of all, uh, if you if you if you click on a on a point and you get a where you get your red cross, if you find it's not quite in the right place, you can actually click and drag it until you've actually completed the line. It is actually an, ed an editable point, so you can actually click and drag it around until you get it in a more precise place. The other thing I should point out is that uh, barrel distortion is more pronounced around the outer edges of the frame, so make sure that you draw, uh, that you get some points around the outer edges if you possibly can. Okay, so I'm just going to make my node graph a little bit, uh, a little bit bigger and just shrink this down a tad, and we'll move on to the next bit. Okay, I'm just going to come right to the end here and then explain. And I'll just shut, shut that off. Okay, so spot the difference. The difference clearly in this case is that um, is that we've patched the the dolly track, and that's ultimately what the purpose of this exercise will will be. So I'm just going to uh, start to strip this down so that we can uh, so we can take a look at how we might do that. So what will I do? Um, I'll take those. Uh, I'll take those nodes and delete them out. I'll get rid of that merge node. Uh, get rid of that. So get rid of that dot. So here we are. We're back where we were uh, before, where we just have our line analysis uh, applied. We can see there that if I turn on the lines, they're the lines from before. So this is the this is the undistort that we did from that line analysis. I've essentially just dupl duplicated it from there across. Okay. So what we're essentially going to do is we're going to take this undistortion and apply it to a patch. Now I'm only going to be working on the very last frame um, for reasons I'll explain in a second. So it'll become clear when I read in this clean plate that I. That I created and just connect up to that. Okay, so this clean plate was essentially created by taking the very last frame from the image sequence into Photoshop and um, and performing paint operations to paint out the uh, paint out the dolly track. So the first thing we can see, if I just toggle between them, I've just connected the viewer up both of them we can see the lens distortion uh, on the uh, or the undistort on the, uh, on the on the sequence um, and we can also see just if we just take a look here that the original plate is 1k but the patch was actually saved out at 2k so twice the size so the first thing that we're going to need to do here is I'll just disconnect so that we can just work down this side the first thing we're going to need to do is apply a reformat node just to bring that back down to 1k so that ju that's just jumped to my uh, to my project settings which I've already set to align to the plate okay so we're now we, we, we've now got a, a sort of a parity there between our uh, our formats and that's important so the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a roto so that we can isolate everything from from this patch, apart from the area that we want, which is just this area around where the uh, where the dolly track is, but it's quite uh, it's going to be quite tricky to do that uh, from uh, from from there because obviously we can't see it. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to hook up straight to the plate, and uh, and I'm just going to add in a roto node straight in straight into there. 
So that's uh, that's st straight into the plane. I'll just up the read node up to that. It just means that we can see this a little bit better now. So I'm just going to draw a spline around this, and I'm I'm not going to be too precise. It's it's only for demonstration purposes. So I'll just take a, a node and just draw around here. close it off so if we uh, if we just switch switch over into the uh, this is not this is not easy with the uh, with, with the screen capture software on that's the red there's the alpha we can see our alpha we can see we've got some very hard lines I think we need to do something about that the easiest way and again I'm not going to labor on it would be just to pull out the the feather points. By doing that, it just softens the matte line. Like so. Again, I'm not going to be too precise here. Just a little bit of softening. Like so. This is very difficult with the uh, when, when screen capture software is on because there's just no space to operate. But I'll just pull out a little a little bit. Okay. So again, if we just go back to the alpha channel, we can see that that's just softened the lines, and that you is usually helpful in um, in just uh, in just embedding a roto or a patch into into a plate. Okay, so I'll just pull out of there. So now I know where that is. I can now hook that up into the uh, into the right place, which is uh, which is just here. And we now need to set this to pre-multiply by the RGB so that we only have the area that we need. Uh, so we don't obviously otherwise it will cut out everything including the actors movements which we uh, which we need to protect so we're now ready to merge our our patch over our sequence so I would be applying a merge node at this point here this is an A over B the patch is over the plate so this is my plate I'll just bring a dot node down just to straighten that up and we now have the patch applied over the top of the um, of the original plate. It, now as I said before the patch was created in Photoshop uh, on the plate before it was undistorted so it therefore makes sense for us to duplicate the uh, the lens distortion and apply it to the uh, patch so here's our lens distortion again I'm just going to type Alt C just to pull that out so that we've got a, a duplicate and this is going to need to go in after the roto pull this down but before the merge and if we take a look at that now then you, we can see that that's fairly subtle but we can see if you just look here for example you can see that there, there, there's a there's a with the with the with the undistorted plate with the, with the distortion on there's a there's an anomaly there whereas with the uh, with the distortion applied then it strains it out, so we can see that that might be fa a fairly subtle thing, but uh, but it certainly makes a difference in terms of the uh, in terms of the quality of the of the composite. Now, as I said before, this is only applied to one frame. If I start to pull this through, we'll start to see the image as the camera moves. We start to see the patch staying in in place. Just let me close all those so we so we can actually see this. Um, then obviously our patch isn't moving and clearly uh, that in order for our patch to move it essentially is going to have to be uh, it's going we're going to have to have a, a camera tracking here and we're going to be uh, tracking the uh, the patch into the shot and we will leave that for another tutorial i think one other point to make is that it's normal at this stage once we've actually got the composite in place to be making some minor adjustments to our uh, our roto it's easier to do once we've actually got the uh, got the composite in place and merged over 
um, but sometimes we may need to do that just to sort of uh, just just to ease some of the some of the areas and soften some of the areas between the original plate and the patch but anyway that's the end of this exercise hope you found it really useful hope you've got a much better understanding of lens distortion and undistortion and its significance in uh, in compositing in visual effects <laughs>